In this video, we will demonstrate how to create a match play tournament and enter scores. In order to create a match play tournament, you can log into your website, switch to Club Central, and navigate over to the responsive match play module. Within the Manage tab, we have the ability to create, update, and delete match play tournaments. At the very top, we have the new match button, which will allow us to create a new tournament. Below that, we have a few filters including a name search, where you can go ahead and enter the name of your tournament to search for it. Then you've got your matches, where we can search by upcoming, past, and all, as well as status, where we can search for all, deleted, unpublished, and published. You also have the reset button on the right, which will take you back to the filter options you see here. The table below will display all the tournaments based on the filters you've applied at the top. The pencil icon will allow a user to edit the tournament. If needed, upon clicking the pencil icon, you do have the ability to delete a tournament. Beside that is the two paper icon, which will allow us to copy an existing tournament. The table can be sorted by clicking on any of the column headers. But let's go ahead and create a new tournament by clicking that new match button. Within the general tab, let's take a look at the settings. First, we have the match name. So this will be the display name of our tournament. So for example, let's put our winter tournament. Then we have the round length in days. Here we can specify the amount of time players will have to complete their matches. This will establish the start and end dates for each of the rounds within the tournament. However, these dates can be altered once the tournament has been created. If configured to do so, the system will send specified recipients an email at the end of each round notifying said recipients about outstanding matches. However, it will not automatically progress to the next round. Next is the number of entries. Here we can specify the number of players the tournament can accommodate. If necessary, you can change the number of players the tournament can accommodate at a later date prior to the published date. 64 is the maximum number of entries we can add. Below that is the players per entry. We can configure a team tournament by specifying a value greater than 1. 8 is the maximum number of players per entry. If we select a value greater than 1, we will have an additional field of minimum players per entry. This option will be defaulted to the same value as the players per entry, and this determines the minimum number of players a given team must have. Next is the start date of your tournament. This is the date on which the tournament is set to begin, i.e. the start of the first round. So let's go ahead and choose a future date. Lastly is the ability to allow participants to enter score. If checked, any player on any team in the tournament will be able to enter scores for their own matches. If unchecked, players will only be able to view the tournament and only admins will be able to enter scores. So let's go ahead and click save. Upon clicking save, a tournament created message will appear at the bottom of the window and three other tabs will appear, including schedule, players, and notifications. You might also notice that a message will appear beside the published date. We will be unable to enter a published date until we have entered at least half plus one of the specified entries, i.e. if the tournament has eight entries, at least five entries must be specified before a published date can be populated. Now let's take a look at the Schedule tab. The Schedule tab outlines round start and end dates based on the start date and round length specified in the General tab. The end dates can be modified, so for example, which will change the start and end dates for the subsequent rounds. The number of rounds you see here will be based on the number of entries that were specified in the general tab. Then we have our players tab. The number of players that can be added to a seed will be dependent on the number of players per entry specified in the general tab. We set this up as a team-based tournament with two players per entry. To add a member player, simply click in the box and type their name and go ahead and select. You also have the option to add guests. To do so, just check the guest box and include the guest first and last name as well as their email address. However, I'm gonna use a member at this time. So put my name in here and go ahead and select. If you like, you can rearrange the order of your seeds by clicking on the four arrows in the top left-hand corner of the seed and clicking and dragging. From here, if I scroll up, we can go ahead and click save to save the player information. Now notice when I click save, 
the Team 2 move back over to the Team 1 seed. Upon saving the player's tab, if not all entries are completed, the entries will be reordered such that any empty entries are the lowest seeds, numerically highest, so as to ensure that the highest seeds, numerically lowest, have buys in the first round of the tournament. If you have set up team-based tournaments, users will have the ability to enter participants for each entry, i.e. team, up to the players per entry. However, cannot enter fewer participants per entry than specified in the general tab. You might have noticed that there also is a name at the top of each one of the seats. If nothing is entered, a name will automatically be created using the last name of the first player within the entry, followed by the word team. So for example, as seen here, I didn't put a team name, so the team name was based on Ackerman as well as team. Since the team name is what will be displayed within the bracket, two team names cannot have the same name, and users will be informed if this is the case upon attempting to save. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly add a few more players. Upon entering half of the entries in the tournament plus one, the warning regarding the published date will disappear, and we will now have the ability to enter that published date. The published date establishes the point in time at which participants are informed of their matches and opponents, and as such it must predate the tournament start date by at least one day. It is recommended to set the published date for the next day at minimum, as it does take time for the tournament to process on the website, and the published date cannot be within the past. So let's go ahead and select the 30th. Once a tournament is published, administrators can only edit the notifications tab. All other tabs will be disabled. So let's take a look at the notifications tab. First we have the participant notifications, where we can enable scores entered. If checked, participants will receive an email notification when a score is entered for their match. If you enable this option, an email address is required below. Then you have your admin email notifications, which we also have the scores entered. If checked, if a score is entered for any match, administrators will receive an email notification. For the email address field, we're going to enter an email address for any administrators that will receive email notifications. Multiple email addresses can be entered by using a comma or a semicolon. Email notifications will be sent indicating which matches remain unscored as the round is nearing its end. So I'm going to put my email address here. Lastly is the outstanding match reminder. If checked and the number of days has been specified, an email will be sent to administrators indicating which matches are missing scores the specified number of dates prior to the round end for each round. Once all settings have been configured, go ahead and click save. Now let's navigate back over to the manage tab. Just note that if you are searching for a tournament that has not been published yet, we want to switch our matches over to all and our status over to unpublished and we will be able to see that tournament we just created with the upcoming published date. Once a tournament has been published, members and admins will be able to view the tournaments on the match play page. So let's navigate over to our live site and typically you'll find your match play page underneath member central. Users will be able to view a list of tournaments that are upcoming and in progress. If a tournament has a published date of today, it will take some time for the tournament to publish to the website. There is a filter in the top right hand corner of the match play page, and upon clicking filter, users have the ability to sort by current, past, or all tournaments. Members will have an additional checkbox below the filter here that says only show my tournaments. If checked, it will filter the list to only show tournaments that that member is a participant in. To view a tournament, scroll down, we can go ahead and click on the name of the tournament. A user can navigate from one round to the next by clicking on quarterfinals, semifinals, finals, or champion as seen in the top right hand corner. The option displayed will depend on what round the tournament is on. So for example, if we click here, we can navigate over to a champion or back to our prior rounds. A user can also click on the gray shaded area on the right or left to navigate through the tournament rounds. When viewing a tournament, the options are different depending on the user's relationship to the tournament. If the user is a member and an active participant, so IE has not been eliminated, and we've given them the ability to, they will have the ability to enter scores for their matches. If the user is a member who is not an active participant, 
so either was not in the tournament or has been eliminated, can only view scores. If the user is an administrator or match play administrator, they will have the ability to enter scores for any tournament match, as well as enter scores for all unscored matches for any given round by clicking the Enter All Round Scores button. For an admin and or member to enter a score, we can go ahead and click the Enter Score button. From here, we have the ability to select who won and enter a score for the match. So for example, let's say five to two. If needed, you can click clear winner and score to reset the fields we just applied. Then go ahead and click save. An admin does have the ability to click clear to clear that match score. Upon clicking clear, a pop-up will appear confirming if the user would like to clear the score or not. Just note if the score is cleared, the winner will be removed, which may impact the next round. And that's how you both create and enter scores for a match play tournament.